If you found yourself living in Fallout's version of a post-apocalyptic society, there's a pretty high chance you'll end up becoming a guinea pig for some horrible social experiment. And even if you're one of the lucky ones that ends up in the control group, you'll probably have something awful happen to you anyway. The vaults were promoted as a refuge for anyone who didn't fancy having their eyes boiled in their sockets by the lingering nuclear radiation, but in reality, they were anything but. Designed by Vault Tech to house as many humans as they could hold, and often more, each vault was created to test and experiment on its inhabitants in increasingly sick and twisted ways. We'll be looking at the games as well as the non-canon sources, that's the Fallout Bible and Project Van Buren, the never-released third Fallout game, to decide who had it worse in the nightmarish post-apocalyptic world of Fallout. So without further ado, let's check out the top 5 creepiest vaults. On the surface, Vaults 68 and 69, which we're going to affectionately title The Boning Vaults, were one of the best places to be. Both were named after sex positions in the Kama Sutra, with 68, a vault with 999 women and one man, being the position designed for female pleasure, and 69, a vault with 999 men and one woman, designed for male pleasure. I highly doubt that anyone in those vaults is actually deriving any pleasure from the situation, but what else can you do with vault number 69? I'm sure you could imagine what these vaults quickly descended into, and it rhymes with porgy. But not just any old porgy. One where one person gets torn apart by a hungry randy cohort of dwellers. If you've ever watched the scene at the end of Perfume, where lovely Ben Wishaw gets torn apart by angry Parisian strangers, you can probably imagine the scene we're talking about. The purpose of Vault 77, mostly seen in a Bethesda-sponsored webcomic made by the dudes behind Penny Arcade, was to test the sanity of one man, giving him nothing but food, water, and a crate of puppets. As you might expect, the poor guy went from being relatively sane to being a crazy master of puppets, and not in a cool Metallica way. He starts off by playing with the puppets to amuse himself in the absence of human contact, but it's just a few short years until the puppets start talking back. Does this guy have it bad if he doesn't know anything else? At least he has company, even if it's all in his mind or in his hands. Vault 108 is a demonstration of how the experiments could go very, very wrong. The main premise of this one was to study the struggle for power in a vault, with various systems put in place to encourage such a conflict. However, what happened instead was that everyone in the vault decided to dabble in cloning, obviously. Gary, 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 Gary. After the first few turned violent due to an imperfection in the process, what did the intrepid scientists do? Carry on, of course, which unsurprisingly led to everyone being murdered by Gary and his 54 clone siblings. For reasons known only to the Garys, they can only communicate in various tones of Gary. Like the gross eugenics Pokemon game we never got. Well, you know what they say. You say it best when you say Gary. Young adult dystopian fiction aside, the idea of a post-apocalyptic society made up entirely of preteens is something that makes most of us recoil in horror at the thought of diaries, bad skin, and relationship drama on Tumblr replacing important things like politics and healthcare and uh, responsible drinking. Vault 29's inhabitants were all under the age of 15. Raised by a supercomputer and a bunch of robots, and watched over by a benevolent woman named Diana, who was in reality just a human brain connected to another supercomputer, it takes a village to raise a child, and it takes a lot of creepy technology to raise a vault full of them. We're imagining this one going down a bit like Lord of the Flies, but with more rad roaches and guns, and fewer lessons on the nature of innocence and morality. Plants are a good way to pep up a miserable environment. Get a cactus for your desk! Put a banana plant in your toilet! Give your friend a spore plant! There's nothing like plant life to make you feel like things aren't so bad. Of course, for the inhabitants of Vault 22, that didn't quite work out. The vault was filled with scientists dedicated to their experiment, seeing if plants could sustain life inside a vault. Now, technically the experiment was a success. I only say technically because the people themselves turned into plants. And you know, technically that fits the brief because technically they're all still running around. What's a bit of extra chlorophyll between friends? 
Now comes the part of the show where we take a look at the creations from the community. Remember, you can send in all your wonderful creations using the hashtag GSFallout on Twitter. But let's take a look at this week's creations. First up, we've got the Fallout 4 Home remade by Bourgeois Banana. Fantastic name. But someone has actually recreated the opening scene of the Fallout 4 trailer inside Fallout New Vegas. And it's actually a close representation of the actual Fallout 4 home. It's pretty impressive. I don't know if you can actually download this, but it'd be pretty interesting to run around in first person in this new slash old neighborhood. Next up, we have the Fallout 4 Garage Diorama. Now, this is adorable. Someone has actually recreated a scene from the Fallout 4 Garage. Tiny dog meat and all. A little tiny diorama. I want this on my shelf. Please send it to me. Even cuter is the Fallout 4 Garage Lego creation by Cmox. I'm not even this created with normal Lego, never mind making my own custom Fallout Lego. Excellent work. Now this is terrifying. This is a creepy Todd Howard shrine. This is something I never thought I'd see in the world of the internet, but someone quote-unquote found, probably made, a terrifying shrine to Todd Howard with It Works. It Just Works spray-painted again and again and again and again. Terrifying, but also Quite, quite hilarious. But just a quick community wrap-up this week. Uh, make sure you send in your creations, like I said. I've been your host, Dave Jewett. You can find me on Twitter, at Dave. And as always, stay safe out there, Wastelander. Wastelander.